Alrighty, welcome back everyone. This is the Happy Toolbox and this week we are going to be diving back into the world of AI, but this time instead of generating 2D illustrations and artwork, we're going to be using a waitlisted program I got access to called KDIM that takes your 2D pieces of art and supposedly uses AI to output full 3D models that you can download and use within your scenes, however you see fit. So if you're interested in a sneak peek of this, seeing pricing around it, seeing how it fully functions, stick around. All right. Okay, so I feel like I'm uniquely poised to take a look at this program, specifically because I have a 3D modeling business, thehappytoolbox.com. So we sell all of these packs. No, I'm selling a pack for 55 bucks for a single, $220 for a studio license. That's 45 models. They're all fairly nice, etc. And this app is promising to take 2D artwork and generate these 3D objects. So that could either help my workflow a ton or it could kill my business, I guess. So um, let's see what their API says here. It says accessible to everyone. So zero 3D modeling knowledge required. It takes a variety of inputs. So you can do photos, sketches, concept arts. They really highlight 2D here, which is interesting. They also have kind of coloring widgets inside where you can actually color this thing. And then since it is an API, it looks like developers can kind of hook into this thing, which is pretty interesting. They also say blockchain functionality, which is kind of, I don't know, maybe it's just marketing buzzword. And then 24 seven processing, which is pretty interesting when you first read this because you're like, well, it's an AI. I mean, it should be processing at all times, right? But when we jump into the app, I'll show you some specifics around what they mean around that. Um, for pricing, I just wanna show this to you. I bought a trial version of this, but if you go over to pricing, <coughs> we are looking at $539 a month and you only get 30 models outputted from this thing. Um, and you can only have one account and kind of iterate on those 30 models 12 times versus pro is 1600 bucks a month. And then if you actually wanna use this API in your app or something, it gets pretty, pretty insane. Okay, so this is your workspace. There is some documentation and tutorials. I'll probably show you documentation right at the end because there are interesting things about this that I want you to know, but most of you probably just wanna see how this functions. So I already did one yesterday and with my trial, I get one model a day for three days. So I did this one yesterday just so we have one other to look at and then I'll do one live here. So as I said, I feel like I'm uniquely poised. I have all of these 3D models that we can take a look at. So this is my concept artwork for my city pack. So if I navigate on my website to my city pack, go down here, you can see that I have this mailbox. I have this mailbox 3D model. Um, and then I also have this fire hydrant I'm going to do this time, which is up here. Um, so I have this 3D model as well. So what's great is you're going to see my 3D model I actually have based upon my actual 2D concept art compared to what this program spits out. So I think that's a really cool comparison that I haven't really seen a lot in other videos. So let's take this fire hydrant and put it through their system and see what happens at just a really base level. So I'm going to go up to hit this plus. It says upload max six images. I do not have six images. I just have my original artwork. So I'm going to pull in a cropped version of this fire hydrant and see how this does. So I'm gonna drag this in, that's it. I'm going to leave this at a really high poly count. So I'm just gonna leave all of this off, just base and see how this works and hit generate. And I found this process takes about 15 minutes for it to return you your model. And that's also what it says inside of its documentation, which again, I'll go over in the end. And there's some interesting tidbits um, that kind of reveal why it might take 15 minutes or longer to do that. So I'm gonna speed this part up and then when the model is ready, we will take a look at it compared to our fire hydrant model from our city pack and the same for that mailbox model from our city pack and we'll go from there. Okay, so it's completed and I have not checked this out yet. So I timed this on my phone and it took about 16 minutes and 42 seconds. So a little bit longer than this one. I was wondering if it was a little more complex with all this kind of ribbing and you know these side pieces. So if I go in here, okay. I mean, this is admittedly worse than the mailbox, but I kind of expected that. 
especially because in my you know illustration only this piece is drawn so obviously there's another similar part on the other side as we know with fire hydrants but it did not generate that but you know we can get in a little closer it does have a lot of decent details um that maybe you could start to clean up i mean this top piece is very interesting uh it gives you a poly count so it's a pretty high poly count and what's interesting is it also titled it hydrant and i purposefully did not name this image. I named it no name just to see what would happen. And so the AI is understanding, okay, that's a hydrant. Let's try and build it. Um, maybe it's pulling pieces and parts from something else. I don't know. An interesting thing you can do here then is you can either expand it really big so we can check it out way closer. They have kind of this colored fill tool, which is kind of interesting. So I could actually turn it, you know, red if I wanted to. Fairly interesting. Um, there's other things you can do as well. I'm gonna actually exit out of here and go to edit. And here you can say, describe what you would like to edit in 25 words. If it's easier, you can draw on the image to highlight what you want. So I'm gonna click that. So I'm gonna draw really poorly with my mouse. I have this other piece we're missing back here and see if I can fix that. And then in here, I'm gonna say, write, side needs a nozzle that mirrors the left. Let's try that and then hit confirm. And so this is an iteration then you can make and the iteration itself needs processing. So I submitted that. I'm going to wait on this screen and start a timer for how long this is going to take and we can take it from there. Okay, we got it back. And actually this edit took 14 minutes and six seconds to return. Um, and you can see, let's go to the expanded view. It did add it, but at what cost? <laughs> uh, it did add it, um, but our first one was kind of off centered. So it did actually, you know, say the right hand side, it added something. It looks a little bit deformed here, but I wonder why it took that long. I, I feel like that was a, a long time compared to the initial generation of this object. So from here, let's download these, bring them into Cinema 4D and compare the geometry, uh, to our actual models in our model packs. And the way you do that is you can just hit this little download button. And you can choose GLTF, FBX, OBJ, all these, which is really nice that they have those options. I'm going to choose FBX. I always like working with FBXs. So there we go. We're downloading it. And then I'm also going to go in the mailbox, which I'll show you. Um, the mailbox turned out a lot nicer than uh, the fire hydrant. So there's even a handle. It's inset. They added the little hole. They added a screw down here per my drawing. I was pretty impressed with how this initially turned out. Um, so I'm going to download the FBX of that as well. Got them. And then let's hop into C4D. Okay. So here we have them. I just went uh, into my little lib4D file I have loaded from our Happy Toolbox City Pack. I grabbed the post office box and I grabbed the fire hydrant, threw those in. Those are what is on the right-hand side, and then on the left-hand side is what KDEM created. So, as you can see, the mailbox is pretty damn good, in my opinion, in terms of base geometry. The way I do a lot of my 3D modeling is sub-D modeling, so you can see it's in a subdivision modifier, which makes it a lot smoother. You get like nice rounded corners, etc. Um, KDIM has a little bit of that going on, which is kind of nice. And I'm sure you could push that further if you did some of those edit modes on it. Um, I'm going to uncheck this and just see the geometry base that we got compared to my geometry over here. So, um, pretty, pretty close and comparable, pretty decent geometry on KDIM side as well, which I like to see. It's not just creating like a ton of crappy triangles or something like that. Um, it's actually doing a decent job of that. One thing I did notice between the two, um, you know, if I bring back my artwork up here in my artwork, and if you know what a post office box looks like, this is kind of a little lock uh, keyhole right here. Um, and so if I go back here, KDIM 
interpreted that as a screw um, versus what I was able to then interpret it as is kind of a little lock hole, right? So there are some of those things that an artist just has to have the intuition and understanding of how objects are built to model these, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with the results here. The other thing I noticed is that, at least in regards to the post office box, you know, there's a handle here. The handle looks pretty nice, which was cool. Um, all of the axis points are in the dead center of this thing. So uh, if you want any functionality on this object, it's a little hard. Um, but another thing I notice is if I kind of click on what is supposed to be this opening drawer, uh, KDIM has kind of interpreted that whole thing as one unit piece of geometry. So you really can't do a whole lot with that versus over here, you know, if I select our drawer, um, you know, it's an actual drawer that opens and closes. I think one thing with this that they talked a lot about in some of their um, video marketing for this is that they were looking to help, you know, game developers and film industry that spend like 60% or more of their budget on 3D modeling. Um, so I could see something like this model being super useful when, you know, it's in a aerial view of New York City or something and it's this small and you don't really need functionality to it. Um, so I think that one was really successful. When I go to our fire hydrant, I'm gonna turn off sub D modifier on my fire hydrant as well. The geometry is pretty clean, which is nice, but I did notice interestingly, whereas the mailbox had a lot of pieces and parts, this fire hydrant had no individual parts, which I was kind of bummed about. I would like to have seen a lot of these pieces removed, like even these, I, I was surprised that these little bolts, um, they were kind of stamped down into one unit. And it's interesting because if I select these and I kind of do my UY trick, which kind of selects areas around it, it is a separate piece of geometry. So I'm not really sure why it merged it together here, but overall pretty impressive. I mean, this is just the beginning of this technology and this is where we are at and it is pretty damn close. I will say, um, you know, this technology might seem a little bit scary to artists or 3D artists, but uh, one thing that I am seeing as a pattern with all of this AI stuff is that the artist is still necessary. For instance, with this, this is cool to output this geometry, right? Like I got something really close to what I created myself by hand, but I still had to input my sketches of what this looked like. And this is my brain being like, hmm, how would I draw a fire hydrant? How would I draw a post office box um, stylistically? and make decisions about it, right? So it's still kind of the artist's input and what they're getting uh, is just a faster representation in 3D space of that input. So I think there's exciting things about it, obviously scary, but um, I think this is pretty cool. I will say this took about half an hour of my time in total, not including the sketch. And if I were to you know, throw a grid texture on one of these, you can see they're not UV mapped. Um, versus I spent about two hours on each of these objects that I have, and they're fully UV mapped um, and ready to go and also sub D modeled. So again, I think this program has a fair bit of work to do, but it's really exciting to see uh, these new AI technologies come out. Um, one last thing before you go, I just wanna dive into um, their documentation, which is pretty interesting. You know, they have specifics around, okay, for characters, how you should do characters, you know, the best input is kind of sketches like this, which I will say, I feel like this does take a little bit of 3D understanding comparatively to what they're pitching in the beginning. Maybe you don't have to 3D model, but you have to understand 3D space to draw things like this. And then I also wanted to show you, if you go to how it works, this is where that 15 minute time period kind of gets a little more interesting. So they're saying it takes approximately 15 minutes to complete an input image is submitted and passed through our AI algorithm for reconstruction. The output is generally very accurate, but sometimes not. And a quality control engineer will look at the output and improve where necessary. So this is passing through human hands still, which I think is kind of an interesting take on this. I think it's, you know, generally on the surface, like this is AI, this is all happening 
by code. And I'm sure a lot of it is. I mean, like the fire hydrant example, you know, it kind of placed it wonky on the side. It didn't have one on the other side. I feel like if a human was doing it, they wouldn't have chosen to do that. They would have used their eyeballs. So in closing, going back to their pricing plans, the light base version is $539 a month, and you only get 30 model generations a month. They come out sometimes not exactly how you want. The geometry is pretty decent, but you'd have to do a decent amount of cleanup to use them, especially in a sub D instance, and they are not UV mapped. So with that, I am out. This does not work for my workflow yet. Uh, maybe in the future when the whole thing is sped up a ton and it gets a lot better, I can just become a 2D artist and sketch stuff and create 3D models for y'all. But in the meantime, I'm going to stick with what I know best and that is just 3D box modeling, baby. All right, if you would like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would help us out a ton. Leave any comments in the comment section below. Would love to hear what y'all think of Kadeem now that you've gotten to take a look at it. And as always, if you're interested in any 3D models, as I showed you, head on over to the happytoolbox.com or pay $539 a month to make some of your own with Kadeem and do not a lot of work uh, to get to that point. All right, I'll see you next time.